Florida is a constant target for invasive plants, pests, and diseases. This is mainly due to its geographic location as well as an increase in global trade and travel. State and federal agricultural agencies work hard to stop these introductions through the enforcement of stringent regulations and through extensive survey. But it's impossible to stop all introductions. A recent example is right around the corner. Here we are at a large infestation of Mycania micrantha in the Redlands area of Miami-Dade County, which is actually the first place where this weed was found in the United States. Now we're standing on a roadside, which is where you'll commonly find this plant. It's a real threat, and not only that it's listed on the federal and state noxious weed list, but it's also considered globally one of the 100 most invasive alien species. Now, it's a fast-growing vine that's very prolific, and as you can see behind me, the vine will actually grow up into the trees, covering trees and the surrounding plants, and it chokes out the sunlight. Furthermore, they have thousands of flowers, and each one of these white flowers turns into a little seed cluster. That seed cluster is then spread by wind, very similar to a dandelion. And that's one of the reasons why this is such a threat. Left uncontrolled, Mycania micrantha can cover disturbed areas in only a few months and then spill over into agricultural areas. It can smother and overwhelm other small plants and even large trees. It has been documented as a pest in banana, cacao, coconut, oil palm, rubber, and rice plantations. Like Old World Climbing Vine and Kudzu, which have already invaded Florida, it could quickly change the landscape. However, because Mycania micrantha has been discovered early, it may be possible to slow or stop the spread and potential destruction to Florida's natural and agricultural areas. State and federal agricultural officials are surveying to determine the extent of the weed spread, and the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences is developing control methods. In addition to Mycania micrantha, there are two native species of Mycania to Florida, Mycania scandens and Mycania cordifolia. Let's see if we can find some examples. We're standing here in a South Florida subtropical hammock, and we've got an example of Mycania scandens, which is one of our native Mycania species. And what's different about this one uh, compared to Mycania micrantha, which is the invasive species, is the flowers actually have kind of a pink tint to them. Also, this, is a, this habitat is very indicative of where you'll find Mycania scandens, which is kind of shady, moist, undisturbed. Mycania micrantha prefers areas where it's, there's some, been some disturbance, hedges, it'll grow along fences. It also tends to grow up very rapidly and cover those plants. Mycania scandens tends to grow out. It will grow up into the plant, but it tends to grow out a little bit more than the invasive species. The other similar species, Mycania cordifolia, has hairy leaves and stems and larger flower heads compared to Mycania micrantha and Mycania scandens. Though managing Mycania micrantha may prove to be difficult, steps are being taken to limit its negative impact. Plant nurseries are inspected regularly and will be kept free of the weed to ensure market viability. If the weed is found, that location is quarantined until removal and treatment is completed. Backyard gardeners are being educated in proper removal methods, as well as how to distinguish between native and invasive Mycania species. Managers of natural areas are being vigilant about destroying Mycania micrantha. So you can see it's growing up all through this area. Yeah, you can see yeah. all over that tree. Can't yep, you? it's growing all over that. It's covering the bushes here. That's, yeah, we need to remove this. Removal of plant material is essential to the control and possible eradication of Mycania micrantha. All right, well, let's get into it. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'm not even sure this is all Mycania. I mean, it's definitely Mycania on the top, but underneath, that could be air potato, that could be coral vine. Yep. You just kind of have to, yeah, rip it halfway through. Otherwise, the entire forest is going to come down. You know, we should probably double bag this once it's pretty full. All right. Okay. 
Okay. Make sure all the pieces are inside. Yep. If you think you have Mycanium micrantha, please remove it as thoroughly as possible. And for more information, contact the Division of Plant Industry or your county extension office. To further protect Florida's plant industry, report any suspicious plant pests or diseases to the plant industry helpline. Don't pack a pest. When you travel, don't pack food or other products in your luggage that might contain harmful pests and diseases. And only purchase plants from registered nurseries. Unfortunately, this won't be the last invasive plant that Florida has to deal with, which is why the emphasis is on early detection. The Division of Plant Industry will continue to educate the public on the consequences of bringing in prohibited plant and agricultural material. Please do your part to keep Florida's agriculture and natural areas healthy.